Not all federal agencies are the same in the government. Some are ranked higher than others. When you are looking at the lower ranked agencies, these are places that people do not want to work. Usually the Social Security Administration, or maybe we think about the National Gallery of Art. But there's another agency that ranks even lower, and this is the Federal Bureau of Prisons. This small agency ranks at 432 with a score of 35 out of 100. This is the absolute lowest throughout the federal government, and it's not even close. If you were to compare it to SSA, it's 40% less than what SSA has achieved when it comes to the survey rankings. And unfortunately, bad has turned to worse within this agency because the OIG, they just completed an audit recently, and they found lots of issues from poor management, poor leadership, insufficient training. And the problem is when you have issues like that, Within this federal agency, it means people can get seriously hurt or they could end up dying. 350 inmates have died in federal prisons throughout the past seven years. This was due to accidents, homicides, and suicides. Now you're gonna have death throughout prisons. That's just the nature of prisons sometimes. But the real shocking thing is OIG determined that 33% of these deaths, they were preventable. They happen for certain reasons. One of the reasons is inadequate access to healthcare. They don't have the proper healthcare staff to identify when individuals are suffering with a mental condition and they cannot address that. That's one thing. Another thing is they're using non-correctional staff to perform correctional duties. So there's a lot of different job positions if you look into the Federal Bureau of Prisons and you have the correctional officer which is typically engaging and interacting with the inmates. So if you take somebody who that's not their specialty, they weren't trained for that, and you have them do those tasks, there's gonna be an issue. And this happens in the military also. There are times that you get into a combat zone in a deployment and you will have people that are, let's say cooks, people that are used to cooking in the kitchen and you'll throw them on a combat patrol and say, hey, you're a gunner now. Your job is to man this 50 cal machine gun. And a lot of times they don't fit well into that role, but you do it anyway. This is a problem. Then there was a lack of inspections and screening. And because of this, they found a lot of contraband, weapons, and other items that people use to hurt others and to hurt themselves. This all comes down to understaffing, underfunding. This is a two-part problem because first you have to get people interested in applying to come into the agency. And once they're in the agency, you have to make it somewhat desirable to stay. You have to be able to retain them. So let's jump on usajobs.gov right now, type in Bureau of Prisons. We can see there's over 400 open job announcements that you could apply to today. Half of these jobs, they're open to the public. And the top three jobs that we find here are 0006 Correctional Administration, 0007 Correctional Officer, and 0180 psychology. The quickest job that you probably could just jump right into from this list is the correctional officer. And it's for clear reasons. A lot of people find this type of work undesirable. And it's for that reason, they have a recruitment incentive of at least $10,000. And this amount could even be more in a lot of job announcements. It says 25% of your salary. So this could be 15,000. $20,000 as an incentive bonus. But is that enough for you to actually want to join this agency, to be a correctional officer? The good news is if the answer is yes, these job announcements, most of them use the direct hire authority, meaning that they will expedite the hiring process to get you on board. Most people that I've spoken with or that I know in the Bureau of Prisons, they view it more as a stepping stone. It's not their final destination but it is something to help them get into the federal government. And it is also something for people that are interested in law enforcement. You'll find people that go and become a correctional officer because later down the line, they want an 1811 position, right? Like a criminal investigator type deal, or they want to become a marshal or do some other law enforcement activity. Some of the cons or negatives that I've heard about correctional officers, besides being potentially dangerous, which everyone should understand, is that there's a lot of overtime. There's a lot of long days and low morale. You know, usually a correctional officer, they only go up to GL9, which puts you at about $80,000 a year, depending on where your location's at. 
and there's other positions, I think up to GS12. So you could, if you came in, let's say GL6, GL7, after four or five years, you could potentially reach up to GS12. That would put you at low six figures. When I was first doing some research about what it takes to be a correctional officer in the federal government, what I had in my mind is there must be a one to three month program to get you all trained up so that when you actually get into the prison, you can perform in an effective manner, right? You could contribute to the team and hit the ground running. But that's not really the case because the research I've done for required training, it's only three weeks. It's a three week academy. And then after that, the rest of it is on the job training. This leads into an issue that I've seen and heard a lot about, and that's insufficient training. You would think that a lot of these agencies, they've been around for 50, 60, 100 years. So when you get into the agency, you would, you would assume they have a robust training plan ready to go as soon as you get in there. But oftentimes, that's not the case. You end up learning the majority of the task on the job. And it's from this person and this other person. And it's not really set. Like in the military, you have set training, 120 hours or four weeks, eight weeks. But that type of institutionalized training, that really doesn't exist in a lot of federal agencies. The director of OIG, he confirmed all the recommendations that OIG listed. And he sees a better path of the agency improving in the future, right? That's something that you would expect a director to say. Now, this story, this message could do one or two things for you. The first, it can serve as a warning. You definitely don't want to work at the Bureau of Prisons. Another thing that it could do is it can show you a path where not many people are willing to go. And if you are still young, if you still have that sense of adventure or risk, and you want to pursue a path that you know a lot of people don't like in order to get into the government a little bit quicker, then this option is open to you. For the majority of people, I would say this is not the way to go. There's other ways. I would look at recent student hiring path. I would look at other agencies, even the SSA. IRS is fine. I would look at the Veteran Affairs. I would look at a lot of different agencies. I wouldn't be, this would not make it in my top 10 or top 20 list, but like I say all the time, the culture within the sub agencies and the sub offices within the agency could be different. You could end up in a prison where it's not that bad and you have a lot of free time so you can go ahead and pursue educational opportunities. You can find ways to better yourself and use that to pivot to another federal agency later down the line. Most of these jobs in the Bureau of Prisons they fall under the competitive service. So you can be a status candidate after three years. Also keep in mind that for a lot of these positions in the agency, there is an age limit. Okay, if you're looking for a federal government job, but you're not completely dialed in on the federal hiring process, what comes after the referral, after you already interviewed, why is it taking so long to get my job offer? If these are the type of questions that you have, if you wanna understand the federal hiring process a little bit better, a little clearer, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.